Welcome to the Bankhouse Media Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Toman, the founder of Bankhouse Media. On this podcast, we're going to give you some tips and advice from our experiences that will help your business thrive in this digital age. We will also be speaking to fellow business owners who will talk about exactly how they grew their business online, got through their hardest times, and how they turned a profit. I am also going to introduce you to some of the Bankhouse Media team who will share their knowledge and hopefully add even more value to your business. Thank you so much for listening and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hi and welcome back to the Bankhouse Media podcast. On today's show I'm joined by Mark Hamill. Mark is the co-founder and CEO of Arclight Global and I want to have Mark on the show today because I do believe that he and his business are the perfect example of a company that have took the opportunity to go from a bricks and mortar in the room and turn their business into an online company and they've really moved quite seamlessly Mark I think in in my opinion you've done it really really well you've been a prime example I know you've worked hard but thank you so much for coming on the show today so I know a lot about your business because we've worked together for the now the past 12 months but do you want to just give a bit of an insight into what your current business is now and then we'll go back to see how you ran it how you got into that yeah absolutely so uh, we specialize in business awards programs that would be our core business but off the back of business awards we get other opportunities requests for and uh, in-house events for in-house awards programs within large organizations and also training consultancy so we deal with a lot of companies and individuals that are excellent so we act as a bit of a matchmaking service as well as just doing the the, the awards so whenever you say awards right so you've got football awards acting awards like what are your awards in what area what niche have you went into with these awards traditionally they've been customer experience but we've done general business awards as well so large-scale business to business awards typically um, but as I said we do those internally as well so for employees and um, so awards and recognition within company um, but it could be anything really like we, we have a formula that could work for any type of awards we haven't quite got into football awards or <laughs> any any sort of uh, let's say pop music awards or anything like that but you know we could well you're sticking to your niche you know there's a formula to it as you said and um, I'm actually a bit on as one of the judges now um, on your platform yeah um, and I spent actually Sunday uh, judging, uh, going through a lot of applications um, that have entered and I'm looking after two different categories and I thought it was really interesting because there's so many brilliant business ideas. It's a very positive business I feel that you work in. Yeah. You know, so how did you get into this? How, where did it all start? Well, to be totally honest, by accident. Um, so I, I left um, Northern Ireland when I was uh, 18, um, went to England for, for university and then straight out of university moved to Dubai and got into this world of customer experience. Uh, so I was a salesperson working for a, a reasonably large consultancy company out there. And then I was made marketing manager. And part of that job was to run an awards program and a conference. So I uh, ran that for a couple of years um, relatively successfully as well as sort of day job and um, stuff. And then decided to set up my own company uh, in 2013. So kind of extended my experience and and made more of a a core focus around the awards and recognition element of it um yeah well 2013 was kind of coming off the back of like the last recession so you you entered into like quite a an an exciting time at that point that was kind of the time whenever i sort of was getting back into business again as well after a bit of a downturn so whenever you that first business that you opened by yourself what made you want to go out and be your own boss well, I just I, I've always wanted to be my own boss. So uh, ever since I was in in school here, I always wanted to run my own company. So that was wasn't by accident. Um, and I just saw the opportunity and, and thought um, I'll set up this company, which was with uh, a business partner in, from a well-established organisation in the UK. Um, I saw a gap in the market in in the UAE in particular, and then then ran with it. And I was there for ten years in total, of which six of those well five and a half of those years were running my own company brilliant yeah and so again what were some of the categories that you would have ran awards in at that point so customer experience was still one of the main ones but general business and and leadership was another one uh we ran a sustainability awards program and also real estate with the the dubai government so uh we were approached by them and said look this is something we want to do and does raise the level of excellence in the in in real estate um so we 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 did that so that was one of the so we ran four programs and then we had some international ones as well um that was in europe 
So we moved out of the UAE uh, over the five-year period. Okay, brilliant. So now we're right up until you finish up in the last business and then you've decided this new business that you're starting into, how did this come about or what was the next step then into doing this? Because I know that you, you made the move out of Dubai, yeah. obviously. Um, we're here in Belfast right now. So what, what, what has led up to this point? Yeah, uh, well, we again s- spotted an opportunity, so we wanted to move more into into Europe and, and North America, but also we still have our base and a lot of um, customers in Dubai, so we're we're more international than perhaps we were before. Um, so Richard Kennedy, my business partner, and I set this up last June. Um, head office in in Belfast, <laughs> my hometown, which is which was nice uh, for me to come home as well, and um, yeah, so we've been running events. All across, all, all across Europe, North America, and the Middle East over the last year. So, whenever I started working with Mark, um, whenever we first sat down to build your website out and build your sales funnels out, and whenever we were making a video, everything in your video was very much in the room, shaking hands, hugging one another, a thing of the past, a, a, a life that we once knew. Whenever people used to communicate in real life and actually be able to physically touch one another without the the fear of of you know all sorts happening. Yeah. Whenever this started to happen and shut down, you were one of the first companies that I reached out to and I actually thought about you guys and in that moment I was thinking, oh God, I hope, hope they're okay with their business and we jumped on a call. What was it, what, how, what is the difference between in that moment whenever this sort of broke down and you had your bit, what, what happened, just tell us what happened. Yeah, so there was, there was probably a period like many companies, there was a period of denial um, that this was all actually going to hugely impact um, our business. So. With our events, so obviously everyone knows that was sort of end of February, early March. It really started to ramp up, and the challenges, um, issues with with COVID. Um, so f- during that period, we were aware, but not really expecting it to be s- such a massive impact or have such a massive impact on our business. Um, we actually had an event in the first week of March in Brazil with a partner, and and that was the sort of last thing before everything shut down. We had our large event planned on the 30th and 31st of March in Dubai, which didn't happen. As you can imagine, we're still um, waiting to, to run that event. We had an event which was supposed to be in Dallas in June, which didn't happen. We've pos- we had to postpone that for a physical event until October, but then we made the decision, actually, you know what, let's run that, along with the, the awards that we have in September, in, which was due to be in Budapest online as well. Um, so that we... we kept saying internally what can we do to take control of this situation and the only option was to move them online and um, if we didn't we would still be waiting for you know people to uh, feel comfortable enough to travel to events a really terrible analogy but we were talking about like an, an onion so we might have had the core 40 percent of people that would have typically come to our event that would still be comfortable allowed by their company able to travel to get there and then every layer on the outside of that was a reason not to come. So the only reason, and also by doing this and making it online, we've made it much more accessible. So not only are we going to have um, an event, which we hope is as good, if not better than the real thing, we'll have a, a broader audience as well. So to give you an example for North America, that was just for, um, that was an event that was to be held in Dallas. We had people from America and Canada attending. Now we've got people from all over the world, particularly from South America, that are attending, um, which we didn't have before. So I think it's brilliant. And as I said at the opening of this, you know, I do think that your business is one of the ones, there's a handful of them, um, probably two handfuls really, but the, you did really act, you did act very fast. I know that you did sort of, you say you were in denial. I think you were in denial, right? But I do think that also y- you made decisions sooner more than anybody else. I think the stage you were in denial was the part that it was only kicking in for some companies. Yeah. Because whenever I came up to Belfast and met you and you said, I think we're going to pull that event, I was thinking, God, some people hadn't even caught up to the fact that this was even... I think, I think you guys were even further on, yeah. even though still a bit in denial, if you know what I mean, because yeah. you you planned so far ahead with your, comp- with your um, events. Yeah. Going online, what does that entail? So... I, I thought it was a brilliant idea because, you, as you just said, you open up so much where people actually never had access to flying out to Dubai because it cost so much money yeah. or people that worked in companies didn't have the opportunity to attend because of ticket prices or whatever. Exactly, yeah. Now they can come. So what does it mean right now? How have the, how have the awards changed? Well, they've changed. Um, so one of the things I would say is that in terms of our business, we're a content-driven awards program. So although 
you might um, associate awards with just you know a good party and everyone getting the award and go off into the night and that's it um ours is content driven so that was the thing that gave us a competitive advantage really so all you said you've been doing the judging so you've seen the case studies and um, those videos will be live uh, sorry on demand on the day of the event so everyone knows what everyone else is doing and um, it's completely transparent and um, so that's something that's quite different from so for example if we were just the meeting ele element of it which you mentioned the bricks and mortar meeting people uh, just that part of it then I would say it would be challenging to replicate that online but the fact that we've got over 40 hours of content for every one of our events um, and a networking platform which is based on AI so you can get matched up with the person that you want or is most relevant to you and um, arrange meetings on the day you've got your own calendar your own profile as well and um, so I think actually from a networking perspective it is better than the real thing I completely agree you know I'm I'm attending obviously the event digitally um, and then obviously working with um, judging and going through or asking some of the people questions and things like that but even with judging and seeing the application and how much content they put into it and how much work they put into it there are some companies that are really stand out for me I was like I want to use this product like from next week in my own business yeah. you know it, it's very innovative there's a lot of companies coming through and that's what i was saying at the time too your business is really really a positive innovative company because you're getting all these ideas being flooded in and all these business it must be a great place to actually work you yeah, know absolutely because you're surrounded by by entrepreneurs and business owners that want to strive for more and work harder and achieve goals yeah. and awards so i th i think it's absolutely brilliant so what have been the main problems then that you have faced in this transition from bricks and mortar to digital? What would be the main things? Because a lot of people are stuck right now and don't understand like how they can do it or what they can do. Yeah. So what would be the main challenge that you've had to come over, get over? Well, the fact that we, so we, we need more lead time to run an event like this. So for example, as I mentioned, on-demand on content, that's something that they will have to go out and prepare and send in in advance. So historically what we've done is they would be just turning up with their presentation on the day of the events and presenting to the judges there there and then so we need a bit more time um, from the close of entries to the event and um, the biggest challenge we've faced uh, to be brutally honest and it's not a good news story is that we have a lot of people that were in our that have entered the awards going through the process and they've lost their job or moved elsewhere so we've actually and that's one of the fascinating things because we deal with so many businesses, whether they be judges or companies that are entering or partners, whatever it is. We'll deal with about 200 companies for each for each event and the amount of people that are lo losing their jobs. They've now found jobs elsewhere. So I would say that's the biggest challenge for us. So continuity, and um, this has never happened before. Usually it's a nine month cycle. They enter, right, they go through the whole process, but there's been a bit of drop off, I have to say. Uh, yeah, that that actually, you know, I think it'll be a challenge this year. But next year, those companies, those people that have moved to other companies are still aware of you guys. Yeah. You know, they'll still spot the awards and they'll maybe bring those companies into the into the network yeah. as well. So it may be an opportunity for you in the long run. Unfortunate now yeah. for people that have had to, you know, take it off. We, we were just saying before we started having a coffee, you know, Mark asked me, had I ever had like a normal nine to five office job? I'd never had a normal nine to five office job, but I did work for somebody for many years. Um, and it's funny because that was class like with our friends coming through school and everything as a safe option where now that is actually not because you've no control over what happens next Absolutely. you know we've had a lot of control over what's going on and you've really took advantage of it you and rich have have, have witnessed it i've seen it happening so what is it about your business and this new realm of it that makes it special well i would say the the team that we have like we've we're so collaborative and um, we build all the products ourselves like with as a team you know that that's it's not just and we're a small team so we're really quick to adapt if we were a much bigger company like some of the companies out there there's no way they can adapt quickly um like we have it's our only com competitive advantage as a small business over the big boys so we're collaborative we we worked well together as a team and um, one of the things i would say is we're now working remotely and um, which has given us um it's, it's a, another opportunity has presented itself we were all in an office coming in every day and now we're working in four different countries so um, I'd say that those are the things that we just continue to develop products and 
um, as a, as a team, and we're always listening to customers. Uh, that's one thing. Like, I I can't stress enough how how often every day I'm saying just listen to the customers and what they're saying, and um, because they they can give you so much gold and just the answers they come back with. Oh, complete. That's that's where you learn. You know, we are all about the customer journey. You know, through the website and making it really easy. I done a podcast last week about um, video and how you can bring someone right through your funnel just with like videos, and it's all about just giving them as much information and as much content as as possible. You know, so I do think that it's all about customer. And whenever I see what you guys were doing, that that really made sense as well. So if someone was looking to sort of take start a business you know i know that right now it's a bit uncertain times you know and i think that this is a time of growth you know in the last economic downturn recession whatever it is yeah. you know airbnb came uber came all these different things came i i, I personally believe there's ideas that are being formed right now and and things that are going to help us get over certain challenges that we may face in life that are going to come out over the next like three to five years that will safeguard things you know in the future you yeah. know so i'm excited to see what will happen in the next realm if someone has got an idea or is what would you say to like you know the, the person to you 11 years ago leaving that job or leaving university that wanted to start their own business well what i would have said is just check always involve your network because the people that are in your network already are the ones that are going to be most honest with you i'm not saying you need to get the buy-in from your parents because they well, my mom still doesn't know what what i do and probably <laughs> never will but yeah, you ne- never underestimate the power of your network. Always um, ask questions, listen to people, um, and tr- don't invest too much time, money, and effort into something without proving the concept. And um, there's a lot of people that I know, and um, I've been in- involved in it in a business before as well, where you spend a huge amount of time, money, effort on something that actually, you know, it's just not viable or it's not going to work. So yeah. don't. Um, but also on the other side of the coin. Make sure that if you do have a really good idea, try try your best to to yeah. to, to test it and and um what I've always um believed in surround yourself with the, the right people as well. So, um I know I'm not and although I'm running an online business, I'm not the person that's most technical. Um, my business partner is so surround yourself with people that have different skills that can help a more a better rounded business. I would say is is a good. Yeah. I, I agree with that completely, you know, I don't know how to build a website, but I've one of the best web developers in the world, you know, yeah. genuinely one of the best web developers in the world, I believe. So whenever, and it is surround yourself with that level. And one thing I like, I don't know what you're like about this, but I like whenever I, we, ha, we have um, like our team meetings, they're not heated ever, but there's definitely like no disagreement. Yeah, yeah. And I actually love, I love that. That's my favorite thing because I think that's where the lessons come. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you are like that as a team. What? How do you all? Are you sort of? Well, it shows the care, doesn't it? As well. Yeah. No, we do. We do time again. Like we're always. But every every meeting we have is is about like trying to improve. So uh, as I said, you know, listen to the customers. It's not just on, on a one off basis that we're running through every single day, coaching one another. Here's what the customer said about that. What can we do as a team to fix that? Here, you know, heated. Uh, yeah, sometimes <laughs> it does. Yeah, I would say. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's. Yeah, and as long as people are proactive, all our team are proactive. They're all extremely professional, great team. Um, they're all young. Um, every one of us is under the age of thirty-five. So, yeah. you know, we're we're all learning. Um, it's not like me and Rich have all the answers. Of course not. So I know, and that that's it. Like, and and I think there's a really big thing in knowing that. There's so many business company or businesses that I've worked with in the past, just as doing some work for them as clients, mm-hmm. and I sometimes think, God, they're. You know, sometimes maybe I think they're at they're the fact that they feel that they know it inside out or know it so well yeah. is going to restrict them yeah. in the long run, and they don't even see that they're being restricted if they were a tiny bit more open minded and thought that maybe the other person on the team has the right answer or is the right way, yeah. then they may open their se- themselves up to something else. So I think that not knowing that you don't have all the right answers is actually the key. You know, yeah. for me. So with digital marketing, right? We're a digital marketing agency, obviously. How big a part has that played in your companies all through the years, and how has it evolved? And where do you, where is it right now with you, your business? All of our marketing's digital, pretty much. Um, and whether we rely on a, a person within our network to to promote us, it's all they always use digital channels as well. So uh, I would say in Dubai it was more word of mouth, and than than it is currently. Pretty much everything is digital. So LinkedIn is very important for us. Um, the websites that we have, thank you very much. Um, you know they're they're, they're exceptional and, and we're 
they're lead magnets really um, you know we've got lots of things there that we're generating a huge amount of leads through the websites um, the thing I would say we've improved quite a bit is our messaging and um, so uh, a new team member William who's come on board he's um, got a, a master's in marketing and psychology so he's very very adamant about the messaging and um, although he's just started and working in sales um, he's working with our, our other team member Cal they're coming up with new messaging all the time so messaging is arguably as important as the channels that we're we're using um, and we're improving all the time in that yeah I completely agree that's why copywriters make so much money do you know what I mean when if you can if you can write a really successful highly converting sales page and like if you can get the the company's ethos and their why yeah. and get a translating really f easily to a potential customer yeah. that that is essentially what it's all about and I think that even as I said about video as well video is really good for doing that I see that you're doing more videos but like your your LinkedIn is is crazy you know what I mean you have a very big network on LinkedIn you're like in you're a LinkedIn you know marketeer how long have you been building your LinkedIn and how how significant has that been in the whole journey very I would say because um I started doing that in probably 2000 and end of 2011 or 2012 I really started ramping it up um and by you know at the end of that uh, let's say mid 2013 I already had like over 5,000 people mostly in the Middle East because that's where it was that's mm -hmm. where all my business was and um, for my pre my first company when I moved over there and then now it's like over 16,000 um, and it's it's so important for, for what we do I know yeah I, I have never really give that much energy into it um, we've got a new girl started with us and I've I've gone in have you seen these like LinkedIn challenges yeah did you do those back in back in the day or? no I never I never did them I never got into them I don't know why but no they're really good for like keeping LinkedIn active you know I have some clients doing them at the minute um, one in particular Roisin and she is absolutely flying like her business is booming because of her LinkedIn challenges right. um, and she's getting so many people coming through her network and she's getting involved and engaging a lot and I, I was thinking yeah I'm definitely gonna, you know, look into that more. Get one of the guys to sort of do it, you yeah. know. And with that, do you what do you like? How much do you delegate out of your your business? Because you're very business now, are busy now. I know it's like trying to book an appointment with you on your calendar. It's yeah. like we're best like going at seven a.m. You know, before <laughs> before the day even kicks yeah. off. But like, so what do you do? What's a day look like for you? Well, usually I'm ha I would have four four to five calls um, from with different parts of the world. So. Um, yeah, so whether it's the UAE or Saudi, um, Central Eastern Europe, uh, North America. So usually the first part of the day is Europe and Middle East, and then last latter part of the day is, or even evening time sometimes. Although I do try to keep it within sort of their morning time, um, rather than having it really late at night, for example. But usually it's Europe, Middle East, morning, evening times is um, is is North America, um, and but you anything in between that is with helping particularly the sales team. Um, so working with them, listening to what the customers are saying, coaching them, um, whether it be working on messaging, databases, uh, and then anything else that I can lend support on really. Um, I'm, I am involved more on the admin side at the moment because our t well, we're all learning together and how we're running this online event. So we're all collaborating quite a bit, so I'm spending a bit of time on that. But mm -hmm. a normal day, let's say, Four, four calls and a lot of uh, support of the team um, yeah. and I've just had a, a new newborn so uh, yeah. juggling that is yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah exactly he's, he's big yeah. and also moving house as well again yeah yeah so, yeah, so it, it's good it's it's all go no it, it is it's definitely about being innovative and stuff like that and I, I think it is great what you guys have done and even like with just on that note, for I've seen that you're doing more video. Um, I got the I went through the video instructional. I actually was on on the podcast that I was done last week was all about instructional videos and how important they were. Yeah. If I didn't have your instructional video on scoring this, I would have been ringing you at all hours. You know, or ringing Rich, yeah. and like you have so many judges on there, so that was really important. Like Rich just sent me at this minute t tells you what to do this minute, and it is the perfect example of you know the importance of video and also like all the different types. Yeah. So, how much do you, you guys use video and what do you see in the future for that? We're going to use so much more. Um, we want to build uh, a cache of content that no one else has, especially with, the, with customer experience. Um, but from an instructional side, I would say that saved us probably a week of work 
for each program. So for the for the North American one and for European, we have had very limited number of calls or emails. Um, and the emails or calls that we are getting are not necessarily relative to the process, which is great. It's I, I think more than a week. Seriously, like it was so informative. Yeah. Like I didn't need to contact either of you, you know, or Jenny or anyone on the team. I was just like, I, I get what I have to do here. Yeah. Just where's my login and then just do it, you know, and, and that was it. I thought that it was really... I thought it was it was very good, you know. I really, really did. And you could have been one of the lazy ones and just WhatsApp us and say, yeah. <laughs> you know. I'm not going to lie, I did WhatsApp Rich. And I said, <laughs> and then he sent me the link. He said, did you not open the email? And I said, eh, yeah. And then I from mean, there it was fine, right? Then from there it was fine, yeah. But I did have to reach out to him originally because it, I I kind of like, I've been so busy as well. So yeah. I actually was only, I'd, I'd schedule like a full weekend of working on them because I was really looking forward to it. Yeah. I wanted to get into it because I'd read through a couple of them and I said, God, no, I want to actually really enjoy this. So yeah. I penciled it in because I love working with new companies. Do you know what I mean? Or even getting to know new companies and see some brilliant ideas that are out there and yeah. some things that we can add to our business straight away. Yeah. Um, I definitely do think. Um, so what like parting guidance would you give to, a business owner right now that is just sitting with maybe a few challenges that thinks what can I do even though we're coming out of this right now in case yeah. it goes back in or it's it's now people say it's like a different world I think I've been people are catching up to this digital world yeah. we've been working in it and banging on about it for like years at this point yeah. but now people are stepping into it like what would you say to a company that thinks that they have no way of going digital but clearly they do because everybody has yeah from it from that perspective I would just say like my natural Day, you've asked me what my day today is speaking to a lot of people from across the world every single day so I'm listening to them and understanding their challenges how they've overcome them whether that's the purpose of the call or not we're always starting off with how is it getting on how are you getting on there and I, I don't think enough companies do that um, and then if you don't really understand your customers you're just constantly in the day to day helping them out with their you know the product that you're delivering then I don't think you're really going to improve that much and um, so I would suggest that you listen to them, ask them what, it, even if it's a series of the same questions, whatever it may be, get your core customers. We, what we call is uh, the, re, the red light, amber and, and green light um, system. So people that have been annoyed with us in the past, ask them questions deliberately. The ones that have been you know, on the fence or sometimes they come with us, sometimes they go elsewhere. And then the green light ones, the ones that are really, really get what we're trying to do um, and are very, very forthcoming with feedback. Um, so ask, a range of different types of clients not just the ones in your inner network how they can help and um, what what challenges they overcame and then see how you can change your whole your, your uh, customer journey from there because I think that's the only way you're going to do it otherwise you're just going to be doing the same thing over and over again making the same mistakes yeah I th- that's that's actually perfect um, advice just on that we actually we didn't win a job a job that I really wanted to win yeah. um, and I was I we had a, such a good call you know, and I thought to myself, why did, why did we not win that? And I did, Sean actually went ahead and reached out to them and I didn't realize and just said, hey, how's things, you know, how'd you, any updates on that? And, and he came back to it and he said, like, I really wanted to work with you guys, but this proposal just broke it down and made more sense for us. Yeah. And I said, like, you know, see if we can get some feedback on what that proposal was better. And, and he did come back with it and we were able to like now adapt and change. And now okay. he's at, we're actually going back and shooting video with him now. Brilliant. Didn't get the job that I wanted. And I was a bit like, and it, t- it took about six, seven weeks for us to come back around to where we are now. But you're right. It's like the ones that you really get the red light yeah. is where you get the, the most valuable answers. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that is, that is right. And I'd never thought about that before. And I'm going to actually adapt that and take that right back. Yeah. That's absolutely brilliant, Mark. Um, Thank you so much for coming in, having a chat. How do people get in contact with you then? Or what, what is, right, if a company is out there and wants to enter one of your awards, yeah. what do they do? Well, it depends on the awards. So the, the awards websites, but they can always get in touch with me directly. So it's mark at arket global. So A-R-C-E-T global.com. Global.com and also LinkedIn. You can fish your way through 16,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm very active on LinkedIn. So, Mark Hamill, you'll find me there uh, on LinkedIn as well. Brilliant, Mark. Thank you so much for coming in and best of luck with everything. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for listening to the Bankhouse Media Podcast. If you want to take your business to the next level and learn the exact skill set that we use to elevate all the businesses we work with, then you're going to want to check out our brand new Bankhouse Media Academy launching in September. We want to empower as many business owners as possible to explode their results by using the strategies that we use on a daily basis. 
This course will give you the opportunity to grow your business and reach as many people as you possibly can. To get an exclusive early bird offer, just head over to bankhousemedia.ie forward slash academy. Everyone who pre-registers to our academy gets a 30 minute free consultation with one of the team members at Bankhouse Media to discuss your business goals. Just head over to bankhousemedia.ie forward slash academy and we will take it from there. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time on the Bankhouse Media Podcast.